Hello, welcome back to my channel, Thrifty Day. My name is Leah, I'm the creator behind Thrifty Day. Today's episode is going to be part one of what will likely be three parts. We are going to be making an upcycled um, photo album. It's going to be made out of a large children's book. So I'm gonna show you um, what techniques I use. I have a lot of different journal tutorials here on YouTube, and this one's going to be um, featuring a large children's book. So this particular book, I believe, let me see if I can get my cutting mat over here, is almost 12 inches. Sorry, I have all the supplies over here, which I'm going to show you, but, um, okay, actually this book is just under 11 inches. So it's a very large book, and because it was large, I've actually held on to it for years, not knowing what I was going to do with it. I only knew I could not get rid of this cover because it is incredible. I love the back. Um, I found it at an antique mall probably four or five years ago with my husband. Um, so when I kind of started going through a lot of different things, we moved a few months ago, um, I realized I had so many photos from the past Many photo albums were falling apart. I have boxes of photos. So I decided to make this summer, the summer where I organize all my old pictures so they all have a place. They all can be decorative or even these can just be stored on a shelf. So this is a very heavy duty scrapbook that will last you for generations truly because I don't know that anything could break this. This is like in it for the long haul. And most vintage books, children's books, are very durable. So using their covers for something like this is a really great way to upcycle them. Like, I don't know if you could tell, but this one is super wonky. It's like, I don't know if it probably had water damage or something, but it's like really like kind of messed up. So it's a wonderful way to upcycle these children's books that might otherwise be put into um, the trash and we don't want that. So, and even if they're not put into the trash, even if you buy a brand new book to do this because that book is important to you, that's okay. Don't let anybody tell you you can't upcycle a book. You are still using the book. You're just using it in a different way than perhaps the, someone else would use it. So never let anybody shame you for cutting up books. It's okay. Look at the back. It's okay. We're allowed to use our possessions how we want to. They're just books. These are not people. So <laughs> uh, just that's just a little disclaimer here because we will be cutting up books. If you have very strong feelings about that, this may not be the video for you. But if you do have good strong feelings about it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel because I'd love to have you here. It's going to be a summer of DIYs and we are having a great time. We're starting with this big, large children's book upcycled photo album. So let me just show you mine that I've already made. Like I said, I'm gonna be making several, one here um, on YouTube with you. I made this one just last week and it was magical to kind of have because Father's Day just passed and my dad was here and we had talked about a specific picture and I was like, oh, let me go find it so I can show you dad. And we ended up looking through all of these old pictures together and it made for a very special Father's Day moment in fact, my daughter even took a picture of him looking through the album. I don't know, it was just very special. So anyway, I will just sort of show you it has a nice heavy duty spine. This is, like I said, a very old children's book. I put a inside cover in, and then I used these pockets that I got off of Amazon. I will try to remember to link them below. Please note, they are not cheap. These are very expensive, in my opinion. Um, this is not a cheap DIY, especially if you want to do it very well, because like if you're like me and you have all of these old pictures, these are all my pictures from the 70s. If you want them to have a nice safe place to be for lifetimes, you know, I want my children to be able to keep these. Um, I didn't skimp on any of the supplies. So this is not cheap, but once you buy a good amount of supplies, you can make a good amount of these albums. So anyway... Um, this is just a quick walkthrough. I know you probably don't need to see all of my 70s pictures in here, but as you can see, it's nice and heavy duty. I believe this one holds about 140 pictures. Um, and the one I'm about to make with you, if you make it in the same way, will hold that many, depending on the size of the book that you choose to use. So for now, let me show you the supplies and we'll get going from there. 
Okay, so let's go over the supplies you're gonna to need to create this um, upcycled photo album. You are going to need a large book. It doesn't have to be a children's book, but that's what I'm using because I happen to have a lot of. I have a lot of covers and things like that. Um, I was going to use this little house book because I just think it's the sweetest book ever. But um, I realize it's a little bit short for the protectors, the photo protectors that I have for right now. So I'm gonna do a little research and find smaller protectors and upcycle this book later. So I think for this particular tutorial, I am going to use this Disney's Wonderful World of Knowledge book, which suits my family perfectly because we have lots of Disneyland photos, both from my childhood and from my children's children childhoods, if that makes sense. Um, I also love that Dopey's on the back. So you will need a large children's book. Mine is just about 11 and a half inches. And I love that it is very, very sturdy. That's very important. The next um, important um, supply you will need is chipboard. Um, I purchased a large amount of mine. It was only available in a large amount on Amazon. It was expensive, but I will be using more. I have many scrapbooks to make and I will use it in the future because I make journals and I have an Etsy shop. Um, I also have a Patreon. Now, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on thick chipboard, mine is 2.54 mm. I will, millimeters, I will put that in the description box down below. It's very thick, it's very sturdy. Um, that's very important because the spine of our photo album that we're gonna be making is the foundation and we need it to be very strong because once you add all your photo protectors and 130 or plus photos, this is a very heavy scrapbook. So we wanna make sure that our foundation is very strong. If you cannot find this, I do know that Michaels used to sell heavy duty chipboard like this by itself, like in the scrapbook area. Neither Michaels near me had any, so I don't know if it was just out of stock or if they're no longer selling it. Um, if you cannot find it, you can find thinner chipboard or use thinner chipboard and glue two pieces together. You can also find a book, an old book, like a cover. And if you're not using that anymore, you can cut a strip out of that cover and use that as the spine. You just really wanna make sure you have a nice, thick um, chipboard that is not easily bent. See, as you can see, it doesn't easily bend. This is not the time to upcycle like cereal boxes or anything like that, although I love doing that. This just isn't the right tutorial for that. You really wanna make sure you have a nice, sturdy chipboard spine. So you do need chipboard. I already have mine cut into strips, so I'm just gonna put those to the side. You will also need photo protectors or photo corners or you could even use double stick tape. You don't have to buy these. I will link the ones I bought below. Um, again, I got them on Amazon and they are not cheap. They're kind of pricey, but I really like the results and I liked how easy they were because they're self-adhesive. Um, so I got those on Amazon. You will also need fabric. You'll need enough fabric to cover your spine and also go on to the book. Um, I also bought several like pieces that all kind of look cute together because I am going to show you how to do a patchwork sort of scrap spine. So you'll wanna save those. You don't need to buy extra fabric to do that. If you already have scraps, just use those. Um, when I went to Joann's to buy some fabric, it was all on sale. I got all of the fabric you see here for like $4. So that's the only reason I bought new fabric. You could actually get the same desired result just with um, whatever scraps you have. So you do need fabric. Um, you will also need an awl to punch holes in your scrapbook spine. You will need Mod Podge. I use matte and a sponge brush. You will need a paper cutter or a box cutter or an X-Acto knife. We'll get into that um, in a little bit. Optional is book tape or tape. Um, I bought this with the intention, this is book tape. I bought this with the intention to use on my scrapbook, but I don't know that it's totally necessary. I will use it anyway, just to show you how I use it, but this isn't a totally necessary purchase. So, but book tape, um, I always use wax paper to dry my um, journals on. And then I would also recommend if you can, and if you have it to get some fabric tack because um, sometimes it's just a little bit easier when you're gluing fabric onto fabric to have fabric tack. It just works better and faster than just using Mod Podge. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to get started. I'm going to give you a few um, tips about how to use chipboard and how to cut chipboard. I'm going to put some of these things aside. All right, I had to add this in after I had already started making the journal. <laughs> but I did forget to tell you that you will need um, two pieces of cardstock because we're going to use them on the inside cover to make it look pretty on the inside to cover um, whatever's on the inside of the book. So you will need two pieces of cardstock as well. And then you will also need paper to use as the pages. The paper I am using is from Michaels. It's this extremely long cardstock. It comes in a pack of, I believe, 30, but there are five different colors in there and it's $19.99. So it's not cheap and you have to use different colors. So I bought three packs so all of my scrapbooks could have the same color at least. You can use your 40% off coupons, but um, that is still expensive. So if you want a cheaper alternative, I highly recommend getting the brown packing paper that you would like um, pack like you can get it in the mail aisle. They have it at Target and Office Depot, Office Max. Um, it comes on a roll and it's heavy duty craft paper because it's meant to go through the mail. Now, it'll take a little bit longer because you'll need to cut it and probably iron it so it's not all curled up. And then it will be nice long sheets like this that you can use as heavy duty pages in your journal. So um, you can use wrapping paper, but it needs to be heavy duty wrapping paper because these are gonna be holding those um, protectors and a lot of photos. So mine is from Michaels. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. So pages and cardstock. So I've gotten a few questions on a few other YouTubes asking how to cut chipboard because it is hard because it is so thick and you want to make sure it's exact. I don't have a big paper cutter. I used to, but I really didn't like it. It was very difficult to use. I don't like the big arm um, paper cutters. This is all just personal preference, by the way. Everyone else may have really good um, experience with these cutters. I, maybe I'm just not using them right, <laughs> which is very possible. I could be the problem. I'm like Taylor Swift. I'm the problem. It's me. Um, but I don't like the big arm ones because I don't feel like they're exact as exact as I want them to be. So something I, this is like a little hack. Um, these are already in strips because I was already using them. So I'm just going to grab one. Um, the spine should be cut to just about three inches. This one's a little bit thinner than three inches, which is fine. So even two and a quarter would be fine. So a three inch spine, but right now my spine, because these come in 12 by 12 sheets is too tall because my book is only 11 and a half inches. Um, so I'm going to remeasure this to make sure it is in fact 11 and a half. Actually, it's slightly smaller than 11 and a half. So I am just going to measure it the old fashioned way. Let me get myself a pen so that I can just make a little mark. And then I'll show you my trick and how I cut chipboard. So I'm just gonna make this little mark so I know where to cut. I'm also gonna grab my scissors for this, folks. Um, not my pinking shears, hold on. Okay. So, I have my scissors, I'm gonna put them aside because we'll need them in a second. This is the paper cutter I use to cut all of my paper, digitals, printables, everything. And um, I have a nice sharp blade on there right now. But I don't want to make this nice sharp blade dull, so I'm going to set it aside. And I have this blade that's already dull and I probably would have put in the trash. As you can see, I put little black dots on there so I know that it's like the old not so sharp blade. But I save it and keep it in my workspace for times like this. I put it right in here. And so instead of using the sharp blade and dulling it, I'm gonna use this duller one and I'm gonna use it to sort of mark my chipboard where I need it to be cut. I'm gonna go up and down. And as you can see, it kind of scores the chipboard just enough for me to sort of bend it. And then I use my scissors and I trim. That way it keeps your fingers safe. I don't have to get any sort of fancy paper cutter to do this and it's really easy. Now let's just make sure I measured correctly. Yes, I did. As you can tell, they are flush, and so now we're ready to go. That is really the simplest way, in my opinion, to cut chipboard. You don't have to worry about cutting your fingers or using um, an X-Acto knife or anything like that. It's much safer and much easier. So that's my little trick. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them. 
but when I tell you I use the same paper cutter for everything, I really do mean it. So, <laughs> so let me put my good blade back in so I don't forget and we will move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have our chipboard cut, we need to um, take apart our book. So I always start by kind of loosening it up. Oh, this one might not be too hard. I kind of just, oh, oh my goodness, look at me. I feel like I'm so strong. That came right off. Let's see if this one does too. That's nice. Um, sometimes you may need to cut. That is where your X-Acto knife will come in or your box cutter. Oh, wow, I'm so lucky. So now I'm gonna set these pages aside. That was a piece of cake. Um, I have to admit, I do try to limit the use of my X-Acto knife because I don't wanna cut myself. So when it comes off really clean like this, I always start with just using my scissors and I trim it off. This doesn't need to be trimmed perfectly. We're gonna be covering most of it with fabric. So it's okay if it looks a little um, not perfect. So, oh, that was one of the easiest books I ever had to take apart. And you don't really need to worry about keeping the spine intact. Um, you can keep this and make a bookmark. I will probably keep it and disassemble it and put it in my journal just as a memory. So um, now that we have our cover and our chipboard, we're gonna move on to the fabric and we're gonna put the fabric on here. I'm also trying to figure out the lighting situation here, so sorry about that. Okay, so now what we are going to do is add fabric to our spine. I'm gonna show you how we are going to go about doing that, and then um, we will be getting close to wrapping up part one. So as you can see, our spine is just about three inches, and we want the fabric to go a little bit over to make sure it all connects well. So I think if we cut right now, maybe a good five inch piece, um, that should be pretty good. So let me see, let me cut. I actually just rip when it comes to this. Um, so I'm gonna rip a little bit here. You wanna make sure you have a nice long piece of fabric because this fabric is gonna go all the way around both sides. I'm actually gonna do six inches just in case, just to be sure i can cover all the fabric so i'm just going to cut a little snip right there and we're going to rip and then let's see if this is too big or if we'd like it thinner or how we want to make this happen here so it looks like it might be a little bit more um, fabric that i need on either side so i'm going to trim a tiny bit more and then we should be in business as you can see i eyeball everything Oftentimes when people ask me a question about journaling, I feel kind of bad because I don't always have an exact answer because I really do eyeball a lot. But that's the beauty of junk journaling. It doesn't always have to be the same. It doesn't always have to be perfect. But I do know that that is something that kind of hinders me making as many tutorials as I want to. I'm always a little bit worried that I'm not going to be able to teach it well. <laughs> so... um you know, I'm actually gonna trim a tiny bit more. Um, that is, that's something that kind of holds me back because I'm always afraid that I'm going to say, yeah, hey, I have a tutorial coming and then I'm gonna show y'all on YouTube and you're gonna be like, yeah, that, that was confusing or that had too many steps or I couldn't follow. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them below because I wanna make sure that I am communicating as effectively with you as possible. Okay, so now we have a nice long strip Mine ended up being just about four and three quarter inches. That's a good, nice, good size. So let's move these goodies to the side. I'm going to get a piece of um, wax paper because this is where it's gonna get a little bit messy. Oh, didn't, didn't cut that too well. I'm gonna get my Mod Podge and I'm gonna get my sponge brush. And I'm just gonna lay out this piece of fabric right down the center and I'm going to start with my piece of chipboard and all we are going to do is put a generous amount of Mod Podge all over one side of this heavy duty chipboard or um, whatever you are using and um, be prepared to get a little bit messy if you've watched my previous tutorials, you know I am not opposed to just using my hands instead of the brush even. 
I see no problem with that. I like getting a little bit messy when I craft. Um, so we're just gonna stick that right on there. Now that that's done, wipe that off, we're going to add our covers. So that's the front. We're gonna start with that. We're gonna add a good amount of Mod Podge right to the cover. It's okay if it gets a little bit on your words and everything, don't worry. All that will get a little bit cleaned up. And usually I also like to have a little washcloth next to me. I guess I just forgot. So I'll probably go grab one in a minute. Just make sure it's on there, somewhat secure. You wanna leave a little bit of space because these need to be able to open and close, keeping that in mind. And then we're just gonna put some right on the other side. I hope I'm not going out of frame. And then we're gonna stick that down. Perfect. So we have the front cover on and the back cover on. Now this is where I am gonna use a little bit of book tape. I purchased my book tape on Amazon. It's actually literally just called book tape. I'll try to remember to link that for you. I'm actually gonna cut mine in half. I just don't think it needs to be so serious around the entire spine. I did do that for the other journal, but I don't think that it's necessary. When I was doing it, I thought this is a little bit unnecessary to have so much tape. So I'm gonna cut this in half and I'll put a little bit just like this. It just, just adds a little more stability, which is good because like I said, these photo albums are going to get very, very heavy. And so here we go. And see, that as you can see, it's wrapped right around the back. That looks perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, as you can see, I have too much fabric. So I'm just going to trim it a little bit. I'm going to keep this scrap because we can use it on the outside of either this journal or another one. I'm going to cut a little bit more. I actually probably would not overlap the fabric this much if it was a normal journal, but I will just to add a little more security and stabilization for this large journal. So now what we're going to do is get again a generous amount of Mod Podge. We're gonna throw that right on here. Do not be shy. Um, keep in mind that we're going to be putting pretty inserts over that. So you will need some decorative cardstock too. My gosh, you guys, I just left a whole bunch of supplies out um, of that original supply list. But yeah, so you'll want some decorative mod, um, some decorative cardstock. And I'm also, just for the record, this is where I'm gonna get the fabric tack out. It might be overkill, but I'm gonna add a little bit of fabric tack onto that fabric-y book tape just to make sure it sticks really well. And we're gonna put it right on down. Don't worry if you have a bunch of glue over here, like I said, because you're not gonna be able to see it once we put the cardstock cover inside. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I use a lot of glue. I'm an over gluer in general, but I think especially here, it's a good idea to be extremely generous with the Mod Podge. Now that that is down, we're gonna add a little more even right over the top. And then once this part is done, you're gonna let it dry for about 20 or 30 minutes. And then we're gonna flip it over and make sure that the other side gets another coat of Mod Podge. Um, but we'll let this dry a little bit first. Okay, this is the part where it's gonna get a little bit messy because I am just gonna use my hands to make sure that it's nice and adhered. Okay, so now let's let this dry for just about 20 minutes and then we'll flip it over and put one more coat of glue on the other side. All right, I let mine dry for about 15 minutes. It's not perfectly dry, but it's dry enough for us to go on to the next step. So I'm just going to lift it off of that wax paper. 
I'm gonna put a new piece of wax paper down just so no residual glue will get onto what I've already done. And I'm gonna flip it over. Now what we are going to do is add Mod Podge completely to this side, and then we're going to let it dry. I would recommend for at least a few hours because I'm making this next part of this video, um, I'm gonna let mine dry overnight. We want it to be really good and dry because our next step will be punching holes into the spine and, and um, starting to get our pages in. So get your Mod Podge, get your brush, and just start painting that Mod Podge right onto this cover. And again, do not be shy because this will help strengthen the spine, which is exactly what we want. And we're about done with this first part. I'm super excited that everyone um, really wanted this tutorial, mainly because it's a nice way to hold me accountable to do it to my own um, books so that I can have these for my own pictures. I've been wanting to do this for years and now I'm finally going to be doing it. I'm so happy I already had one made and now I'm gonna have two. So I definitely think I wanna make at least three or four more though. <laughs> so it's gonna be a whole summer moment for me, I think. I always use my hands just to make sure that it is completely flat and adhered. Put that on there. Um, I do have a washcloth right by my side now because I do wanna clean up on the cover. It'll dry clear, but I just think it looks a little bit nicer. And that's it. This is part one. We're going to end it here. Let it dry somewhere completely flat overnight or for the next few hours. Part two should be up in just a few days. And I will catch you then. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. Have a good one, guys. Bye.